Well, I'm back and so is the CP is back. The market's turning positive during the hour. This despite lots of economic data out today, including the worst monthly retail sales number ever recorded. But that was April, folks, when fears about the virus was at its greatest and the shutdowns were in effect throughout the nation. Just about every economic report covering April will be the worst ever. But what if that's the nadir? What if that's the, the bottom of it all and it starts to get better? There are already signs like miles driven in the past few weeks, increasing 25%. Even today, the Empire in Manufacturing data, it was a disaster, no doubt about it, but it was a strong improvement from April. And then there was the May consumer sentiment number. It blew away Wall Street consensus. It was driven, ironically enough, by a surge in positive sentiment about current conditions. So if April is the worst for the economy, what does it mean for investors? Let's bring him in, the investment bro, CEO of SureVest, uh, CIO, uh, Rob, Rob Luna, also with us, Kingsview's Wealth Management CIO, Scott Martin. Scott, let me start with you. You know, I love you two guys because you guys are like two handsome, sw uh, swashbuckling, uh, you know, could have been Errol Flynn in a different era. And you both have been very cautious, very, you know, which has worked. You know, listen, your gold plays have worked, but it feels like maybe if, if April is the worst month, Scott, do you reposition yourself for better things to come? Yeah, I mean, Charles, nobody said anything nicer about me ever in the history of the world, so thank you uh, for that intro. <laughs> and what's funny is you know, maybe, maybe that's similar or akin to the data that you're talking about there when you let into the segment. What you're right is, you know, the, whenever you're talking about retail data that's terrible or, or numbers that are the worst ever, uh, those are times to probably buy, believe it or not, and probably buy retail to some degree. Now, you've got to be specific in some of the names uh, we like TJX, uh, for example, Charles. We've held that one through this, this pullback and added to it at points. So to me, I think when you look at, at just this pullback that we had in March and certainly the bounce back that we had in April and so far in May, those are areas where when you see companies start to fall behind, like financials, for example, today, those are places where we'd start looking to put money in as the catch-up trade starts to take place. Rob, you got defensive as well. Uh, now, you went to oil during the midst of that sort of free fall, but I got to tell you, your oil pitch Chevron outperforming ExxonMobil and starting to come on pretty good there. Are you going to look to expand your portfolio, though? You had to bring that one up, right, Charles? Yeah, uh, we, we took a little bit of pain in that, but yeah, it's been starting what? to it's outperform. Going, I, I'm with you, brother. It's going to be a winner. We'll brag about it one day. <laughs> yeah, you know what? But you, right there, if you looked at the last earnings conference with Chevron, they're very committed to that dividend. And almost 6%, Charles, when you got a 60 basis point tenure, I think that's very attractive. But to Scott's point, I think you've got to be selective here. But you know what's really getting me excited, Charles, about this? And I think it goes to you also. We've never have been index investors. We believe in bottoms up, individual stock picking. And when you look at the consumer discretionary index, you look at the retail index, those are up three to 5%. Two stocks we've been talking about, RH, Restoration Hardware. This is luxury furniture. And Polaris, which is very discretionary, recreational uh, vehicles are up 15 and 25%. So you're seeing the companies that are really increasing consumer demand do well while the indexes are languishing. And I think yeah. that's a trade that's gonna continue. And that snowmobiling is the ultimate social distancing recreation. I've got yeah. a friend who does it over the weekends, even now, out in some parts of the West. Hey, uh, <laughs> guys, uh, since April 8th, we've been range-bound, right? So we broke out. We've tra traded sort of more or less sideways. Is there something, Scott, that we should be looking for that may say, okay, the tide has turned. There's a sense of urgency maybe to, be get more, to become more aggressive? You know, Charles, I actually like that point about the ranges here because I think we're actually stuck in one. I think the S&P, say, give or take on the upside, you're looking at 29.50, maybe a 3K hit on the upside and then, say, 2,600 on the downside. I think we're going to stay in there. I really don't think it's going to move that much. So uh, I, as Rob and I typically agree, I guess, of late, he's right. You, you've got to pick up spots and companies that are, say, languishing or trailing the S&P here because I think that catch-up trade is on. But I'm going to add one last thing that you know I love, man, that is not fair to not bring up, especially with you back in the saddle today. Gold, my man. I feel like gold member from the Austin Powers movies. There is massive money printing going on, massive liquidity out there from the Fed. GLD is your buy here if you don't like stocks or bonds or want to add to them all right well you've been spot on both of you guys have done incredibly well my swashbuckling friends in the foxhole rob and scott thank you both very much